In this video, I'm going to give you a quick overview of the properties of variance. Note that these properties are valid for population variance as well as sample variance. Okay. So over here, A and B are constants and X and Y are random variables. So the first property is that the variance of a constant is equal to zero. And this is quite basic to understand. Think of it in this way that if you have a constant two, let's say written five times, you can see over here that a constant has no variability. If you have a constant that is taking the value two, it will keep on taking the value two. So there is no variability over here and that's why the variance of a constant, so variance of let's say two, so this is two, is going to be equal to zero, right? So that was your first property. Now let's move to the next property. The second and the third property relates to the variance of addition or subtraction of two random variables. So now let's take a look at the property number two. That is variance of x plus y. So this is VAR that I have written. It means variance. So this is equal to, it's going to be the variance of the first term, which in this case is x. So variance of x plus the variance of the second term, which in this case is y. So variance of y plus two times covariance, which I'm going to write as COV of x and y. Now, I want you to understand some signs over here. Note that we are talking about the variance of x plus y. So whatever sign you have over here, so over here you have a plus sign. So this sign goes over here and this is always positive. This is always a plus sign. So this is always a positive sign. Let me explain what I mean by this. So if you take a look at the property number three, you will understand this thing that I was saying about the signs. Let's take a look at the property number three. So if we talk about the variance of x minus y, it is equal to the variance of the first term. So that is your variance of x. Now, even though we have variance of x minus y, you will not write minus sign over here. It is still a plus sign. So this is still plus the variance of the second term, which is variance of y. The effect of this minus sign will appear over here. Okay, so you will do minus two times of covariance between x and y. So the thing that I want to highlight over here is that no matter what you have over here, no matter whether you have a plus sign over here or whether you have a minus sign over here, you always have to add the variance of these two random variables. This sign goes over here. So if you are talking about variance of x plus y, you will have plus two times of covariance between x and y. And if you are talking about variance of x minus y, then you will have minus two times of covariance between x and y. But over here, irrespective of whether you talk about variance of x plus y or whether you talk about the variance of x minus y, over here, it's always the plus sign. Okay. So remember this thing. This is one thing that many students get wrong. Now, before I move to the next property, I want you to tell one more thing about this property number two and three. If I tell you that x and y are independent, which is a case that happens many times. So if x and y are independent, then we know that the covariance between x and y will be equal to zero. If you do not know that how the independence of x and y will lead to the covariance between them equal to zero, then take a look at my video in which I have discussed the properties of covariance. I have talked about this over there. Okay, so if you are given that x and y are independent, then because the covariance will become zero, in that case, your property number two and three will change a bit. So what will happen to property number two? In the property number two, you will have variance of x plus y. It is equal to variance of x plus variance of y. And now because the covariance is zero, so this third term over here, this will vanish. Okay, so this term will go away. Right, similarly, if I talk about the property number three, how will variance of x minus y change? You will have variance of x. Note that I'll again have a plus sign. Okay, do not put minus sign over here. It's still going to be a plus sign. And this is going to be plus variance of y. The minus sign comes over here. But in this case, because the covariance is zero, this goes away. Okay, so if your x and y are independent, then the variance of x plus y and the variance of x minus y both of them are going to give you the same expressions on the right hand side. In this case also, it's variance of x plus variance of y. In this case also, it's variance of x plus variance of y. So be careful with the sign. Do not put a negative sign over here. Okay, so I hope you're clear with this property number two and the property number three. Now let's move to property number four. 
to talk about property number four, we can actually use the property number one and the property number two. So let's see what do we have over here. So we have variance of x plus a. Okay, so we are adding a constant. Now let's see what happens when we add a constant. So if I use the property number two, it will become the variance of the first term, right? So the variance of x. It says that now instead of y, we have a. So this will become plus the variance of the second term. So all you have to do is that instead of y, if you imagine a, okay? So instead of y, just imagine a over here. So this becomes variance of x plus a is equal to variance of x plus variance of a plus two times covariance of x with a, okay? Now, from the property number one, we know that the variance of a is going to be zero. So this goes away because this is going to be zero. And from the video that I have on properties of covariance, we know that the covariance between a random variable and a constant. So this x is your random variable, a is a constant. So we know that the covariance between a random variable and a constant is always equal to zero. This is something that I've talked about in my video in which I've discussed the properties of covariance. Okay, so you know this from there, right? So that means the covariance between x and a will also be equal to zero. And this implies that the variance of x plus a is just equal to variance of x. So what do we learn from here? That the addition of a constant to a random variable is not going to change its variance. So if I tell you that the variance of x is equal to four, and then if I ask you that what's the variance of x plus three, well, it is still going to be equal to four, right? Similarly, if you take a look at the property number five, it's exactly the same thing. It says that I have changed the sign over here. Instead of the plus sign, we have a negative sign. So if you relate this to property number three, instead of y, we have a over here, we can have a over here, and we can have a over here. So basically the variance of x minus a is equal to variance of x plus the variance of a minus, because you have a minus sign over here, two times the covariance between x and a. Okay, now because the variance of a is zero and the covariance of a random variable with a constant is also equal to zero, so these two terms will vanish and we will get that the variance of x minus a is just equal to variance of x. Okay, so in total, what do we learn from this property number four and the property number five? That the addition or the subtraction of a constant to a random variable is not going to change your variance. So if you add a constant or if you subtract a constant, the variance is not going to change, okay? Now let's move to property number six. In property number six, I'm talking about multiplication over here. So, you know, A could be three or A could be one by three, okay? So the property number six is valid for multiplication by a constant as well as the division by a constant. Let's understand this property. So what do we have over here is variance of a multiplied by x. Okay, now how can you understand this property? If you have watched my video on properties of covariance, there is one thing that I talked about in that video is that the covariance, so COV over here means covariance, covariance of a random variable with itself is equal to the variance of that random variable. Okay, now using this property, I can write that the covariance of a times x and a times x, so a random variable with itself, this is going to be equal to variance of a times x, okay? So this is one thing that we know from my video on properties of covariance. Now, one more property that I had discussed in that video was that the covariance of ax comma by, so if you have multiplication of random variables with a constant, then these constants are going to come out. So this a will come out and this b will also come out. So this will become a b, times covariance of x comma y. So now if I use this property over here, okay, then what will we get? Well, from here I can take a out and this a also out. So this a will come out, this a will also come out. I will get a square covariance of x with x is equal to variance of a times x. And what's the covariance of x with x? Well, that's nothing but your variance of x. So this implies that a square variance of x is equal to variance of ax. Okay, so I hope this is clear. 
Well, this is not the only way to show the property number 6. There are multiple ways of showing property number 6. But because I have already discussed the properties of covariance with you, so I thought it would be better to use this way to show you property number 6. Okay, so I hope this is clear. So what can we learn from here? Let's say a is equal to 3. So in that case, you will have variance of 3x. Okay, so you are multiplying the random variable with a constant. So the square of the constant will come out and this will become 9 times variance of x. Okay, and this is going to hold for division as well because your a could be equal to 1 over 3. So this is variance of 1 over 3x. So I'm dividing x by 3 over here, but it's written in a multiplication manner. So multiplying x by 1 over 3 is the same as dividing x by 3. So this is equal to the square of 1 over 3 will come outside. So this is 1 over 3 whole square times variance of x. So this will become 1 over 9 times variance of x. Okay, I hope property number 6 is clear. Now let's move to our last property, which is property number 7, which is nothing but just a combined use of all of these properties. Okay, so now let's take a look at the property number 7. Now for the property number 7, the first thing that I'm going to use is property number 2. So let me write over here. So we have variance of AX plus BY. So let's use the property number 2. So what do we have over here? Well, we first had the variance of the first variable. Okay, so we had the variance of X over here. Over here, the first variable is A times X. So I'm going to have the variance of A times X. Then it's a plus sign. So a plus sign. Then we have variance of the second term, which is Y. Over here, the second term is BY. So we will have the variance of B times Y plus, okay, 2 times the covariance between the first term and the second term. Now over here, the first term is A times X and the second term is B times Y, okay? So this is what we have. Now using the property number 6, this variance of AX, because A is a constant, so the square of it will come out. So this is A square variance of X. Similarly, over here, B is a constant and B is multiplied by a random variable. So over here, B square will come out and we will get variance of Y. Now, this is something that relates to properties of covariance that I have already discussed in one of my other videos. So over here, A is going to come out and B is also going to come out. So we will have 2AB times covariance between X and Y. Okay, and this is what... I have written over here. Okay. And if they give you in the question that X and Y are independent, in that case, the covariance between X and Y will become zero. So this will go to zero in that case. And you will only be left with the first two terms if X and Y are independent. Okay. So that's all for this video.